And now you should be seeing the QuickBooks Enterprise home screen. If you use QuickBooks, you're familiar with this. If you don't use QuickBooks, um, you're seeing this for the first time, this is kind of a, a launching point for a lot of different functionality within QuickBooks. If you've used QuickBooks in the past, you probably already noticed that there's a warehouse management icon over here now, which has never been here before. And the reason that is there is because you can run warehouse management, yes, directly inside of QuickBooks. And so the first time the two products sync, once QuickBooks knows that warehouse management is now part of your solution, it changes the way it works a little bit. It adds that icon right there, so you can launch uh, Warehouse Management ES directly inside of QuickBooks here. And it also changes a few other things. As I mentioned a minute ago, the warehouse is the master of the quantity on hand, which means that if you try to do things in QuickBooks that are going to change the quantity on hand, we're going to prevent you from shooting yourself in the foot, knocking the two systems totally out of sync from a quantity perspective, and we're going to direct you over to do those things in warehouse management instead. For example, the receiving icon there, when I click on that, normally that would open up a receiving screen within QuickBooks. Now it says, okay, you want to do some receiving? Great, no problem. But instead of doing it in QuickBooks, find your purchase order and receive it in warehouse management. Let warehouse management update QuickBooks for you. Um, but we're going to keep that workflow straight. We're going to basically uh, make sure that you don't do something that you're going to regret later. All right, so that is... Uh, just a little bit of discussion about how that works there. I'm going to go ahead and close the screen because I tend to get too many screens open here. And let's go directly into the receiving process. Best place to start when you're talking about receiving is with the purchase order. You still create your purchase orders in QuickBooks, just like you always have. That's not going to change. And I'm going to create one right now for Acme Supply. And Acme Supply today is going to get some stuff uh, like a toaster, get a pallet of those. And let's get something else here as well, something that's tracked a little bit differently in the warehouse, such as a ketchup mustard combo squeeze bottle. You can see I'm using my multiple unit of measure. So here I got pallets and cases. I can switch those if I wanted to to other things, of course. Those will be used over in warehouse management as well. I can make a little note down here if I want to, such as, you know, call Joe when arrives. Something that I want the warehouse to see. And I'm just going to go ahead and save this particular uh, purchase order here, purchase order 39. And of course, my little spell checker here is going to jump out and tell me I, I misspelled Joe. All right, so now we have that going here. I'm going to go ahead and fire off a, a quick sync over into warehouse management and get my syncs running here. And what I'm going to do is, because I do tend to forget during my demo here what I'm working with, I'm just going to open up my vendor center here and just purchase order 39. We'll go ahead and keep that open just so we can uh, see what we're playing with over on the warehouse side of things. be no reason to do this in real life. It's just something that's kind of nice for the demo. All right, let's go back into the warehouse. And what I'm going to do here is while I showed you, you can run it inside of QuickBooks. Most of the guys uh, that, that are using warehouse management yes out there in a warehouse are not warehouse management yes is that you can do that you can just use the, uh, any internet browser out there you know ie works great and everybody has that for the most part use that to do your day-to-day uh, -day operations out there in the warehouse don't worry about having quickbooks on the machines what uh, web connector handles syncs in the background and if you have remote warehouses or something like that that you don't want to extend quickbooks all the way out to that's not a problem you don't need to worry about that uh, they can just access their inventory uh, by using uh, just their standard browser on their PC. All right, what I'm going to do now is go into the receiving area here, and you can see here I have both purchase orders and customer returns that I can choose. It defaults to purchase orders. If I know the purchase order I'm looking to receive here, I can type it in right here. So let's talk about the workflow a little bit so you can understand what I'm about to do. Created the purchase order in QuickBooks. Now, some time's passed. It is um, basically, let's say it's a day, a week, a month has passed. The vendor's now delivering the product. Truck pulls up, guy gets out, walks in the receiving area, hands that person some paperwork. If that paperwork has the PO number on it, like 39 there, which is mine down there on the bottom, called Joe, misspelled Joe, uh, or actually didn't capitalize it, as QuickBooks pointed out. There it is, called Joe when it arrives. Uh, in that case, if that's there, uh, the, the purchase order number's on the paperwork. I can enter it in right here, hit go, and it'll just start the receiving process right there for me. If the uh, PO number was not on the paperwork, and I needed to find what I was receiving by sorting through my open purchase orders here. My list might be quite large, of course, but I, you know, I can go in here and start using some stuff. I can tell that this is Acme Supply. Uh, I can click on Acme Supply and uh, have just all of my open purchase orders for Acme Supply come up. If I can tell that this has a, you know, 
know, ketchup, mustard, combo, squeeze bottle in it. I can tap that in there as well. And now if I hit search, it's going to find just POs from Acme Supply with ketchup, mustard, combo, squeeze bottles. I can narrow that list down pretty quick to whatever I actually need to find. And once I've found it, like I said, I can just enter the purchase order number up here, or I just click on view. Now I'm going to do this um, and just on the PC here first, more of a paper-based mobile barcode scanner as well for the folks that are interested in that. So now I'm viewing my purchase order here. This is what I'm supposed to be receiving. Hopefully it's what's sitting in front of me out there at the receiving dock, a pallet of, to of toasters and a case of ketchup mustard combo squeeze bottles. And at this point in time, I have a choice. Do I want to create a receipt with a bill or without a bill? If the paperwork has the bill in it and I have a bill number in front of me, I can go ahead and just create it with a bill. And uh, if it doesn't, I do without a bill. And that creates an item receipt over there in QuickBooks. From what I've seen, it's about 50-50 from the folks I've talked to. About half of folks get uh, your bills with the paperwork. About half get them in the mail two weeks later. So just uh, the warehouse just chooses whatever's sitting in front of them on the paperwork, and off they go. In this case, I chose the bill. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the bill number here because that's on my paperwork, and it's helpful to get that in place. And I'm going to hit set here just to lock it in place so if I leave this screen or whatever, if I come back to it, it'll be there. And now I'm going to go ahead and start my receiving process here. I take a look at this, and I say, yep, I got a pallet of toasters here. Don't need to change anything, and it's already put my receive date on here for me because this is a first-in, first-out tracked item. So I want to know when I received it in the warehouse, I'm going to track it in that fashion. And then on the second item here, this is a product that is tracked in a first expired first out. It also has a lot number. I'm going to go ahead and add that information in right here by clicking on Edit. And so at this point in time, I'm going to go in here, and it's going to ask me for a few more fields. It's going to ask me for an expiration date. And so I'm going to click on my little calendar here, and I'm going to take this thing out. I don't know. Let's take it out to 2010 and just go ahead and whatever was printed on my paperwork there on the product itself, about April 21st, 2010. And it needs a lot number as well. That's required for this product. If this product was not an expiration date or a lot number track item, these fields wouldn't even be here. I can also choose a different unit of measure if I want for my receiving. If I didn't get sent a case and I got sent one each instead, I could easily change that to one each at this point in time instead of trying to say I got, you know, 0.1 of a case or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. And now it's going to show that my particular information here is on the screen. I got lot number and expiration date. And that's what I'm going to use to track my product from now on throughout the entire uh, inventory management system. As long as it's in the warehouse, I'm going to be tracking it with that information. I can print some labels if I need to at this point in time. I can also go ahead and uh, go in here and use my options here to print labels for everything instead of just that align level. I can change the receiving location if I'm not receiving this at just my general receiving location, but maybe I'm receiving it at receiving dock number two. I can change that right here for all my lines as well. And when I'm all said and done, I just want to go ahead and hit confirm receipt. And that's going to send that information back over to QuickBooks for me. All right, let's go ahead and get that back over to QuickBooks. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pop over here back into QuickBooks. And here's that purchase order I was working on. And if everything works right here, one of the reasons I like to open this up is because you get to see the magic happen right in front of your eyes. I receive both those lines, and so I want that big old red stamp that QuickBooks puts on my purchase orders that says received in full. So let's see if that happens here while the product's sinking. And there it is, received in full, closed and closed, right here, closed one, closed one. All right, so everything's been received for that particular purchase order, and now if everything worked out properly, I should also have a, um, let me go back into my vendor center here, I should have a bill for it as well for what I just received. And here's my bill, uh, all data entry done for me, sitting there waiting 